I didn't feel good or proud of the journey that Harold and I were starting on, but I saw no alternative. This was our way out, and as best as I could figure, what was our only way out? Granted, it was a drastic step, but sometimes drastic circumstances call for drastic measures. In other words, sometimes you gotta stick your neck out. Of course, if things didn't work out, if the shit hit the fan, well, I was willing to suffer the consequences. I mean, I prefer not to, but I figure that's just part of the game. If you're gonna put your butt out on the line, chances are your butt's gonna get bit off. How you feeling? Pretty good. No, I mean, how you feeling? Uh, I'm trying not to think about it. Sounds like you're doing a pretty good job. Would you give me those before you get them all messed up? What? Give me them, come on. I'm just a little nervous, okay? Well, then you got the right feeling. That sign ought to say in the middle of fucking nowhere. <laughs> middle of fucking nowhere, that'd be pretty funny. Listen, something goes wrong. You're gonna take care of your own ass. Chuck. Okay, man. You're gonna cover yourself. Chuck, you said nothing could go wrong. I said chances are nothing will go wrong, Harold. But you never know. You're gonna have to expect the unexpected. That right there will be our phrase for the day. Chuck, remember when we little kid the radio, guy on the radio? Say like today's color is like purple or something like that. You'd be trying to get ready to go to school and you didn't have nothing purple to wear, so you'd have to go like tearing through the house looking for some purple, like hey, a purple shirt or Harold, something. Harold, let's not worry about that right now. Sorry, the cards are all messed up. So far, so good. Now remember, something goes wrong, get the car back to the hangar, strip it down, all right? Yeah, you know we'll, the drill. We've only gone over about a thousand times. Yeah, wonder why I'm still worried that one of us might forget something. And Harold, don't be playing with that, all right? Put in your pocket. That still, thing only comes out if absolutely necessary, all right? I still feel a little better if maybe I had some bullets. Harold. Bullets and a gun are potentially a dangerous combination. That's how people get killed. All right? Harold, we don't want no killing, do we? No. It's a negatory on the bullets. Money. Um. Um. 
hurry up. <laughs> oh, do you want me to take you to the vault? doing on the floor? The bank's being robbed. The bank's being robbed? Yeah. By who? Him and his partner. You robbing the bank? Uh, uh, yeah. Well, guess what? So am I. Well, well we were here first. I don't believe this shit. Christ. They want to rob the bank, too. Yeah, the stockings are at their giveaway. Tell you what, I'll make this real simple. You hand over the money, and I'll forget I ever seen you. <laughs> I ain't handing over no money. <laughs> you ain't handing over the money. <laughs> I want the money! Freeze! No! Up pretty good, did you, Tammy Kay? Yes, sir. What's that? Oh, sounds like somebody knocking at the door. Which door? <gasps> oh! I think it's the bathroom. Anybody in there? Yeah. Who are you? Chuck Betts. I was going to the bathroom, and then I heard all this commotion outside. And then, well, when I tried to get out the door, it jammed up on me. 
You all right in there? No, I've been wounded. It won't open. I already tried. It's jammed. All right, you just hang on. I'll get somebody to help you. You better come on out of there, son. You look looking light of the sheet. I peeked out the window back there. I saw them jump into an old Chevy. I believe it was a Camaro. Well, they're still wearing their masks. Oh, no, sir. They took them off. Did you get a good look? Well, yes, sir, I did. They were, uh, two bald guys. Approximately 50 years of age. And one of them even had a handlebar mustache, the kind that whips and curls around. Hey, Millings is here. All right. I'm going to need to talk to you some more later, son. Uh, why don't you go get patched up? All right. Thanks. When you go to rob a bank, you think things might get out of hand, might get a little crazy. But two guys come in robbing the same bank at the same time that you are, and then getting stuck in the toilet. Now that's one situation I never even dreamed of. And then when it seemed like all the weird shit that could happen had happened, something even weirder happened. Except this was a good weird. Hey. You know, I think you've got a little fever. I believe I do. Your body's probably just going through a little shock. Yeah, I guess. If that's normal, there's nothing to worry about. We're ready for this one. There's good looking and there's good looking. But this girl drifted off in a whole different category. She was the kind of gorgeous that make you half hope she'd ignore you. That way you could save yourself the terrible trouble of falling desperately in love. Because let's just face it, with a girl like that, you don't believe she'd love you as much as you'd love her. I mean, what are the chances of that happening? I find out later that her name was Layla. And there wasn't much doubt that she could make me beg darling, please. Well, yeah, I can verify the Capri. Well, no, I didn't see his face. Well, I don't know. Maybe the other guy ducked down the back seat or took off on foot in another vehicle. Oh, listen, I gotta go. I'll talk to you later, okay? All right, bye. How are we feeling? I'm, I'm doing better, thanks. Yeah? yeah. I got him. Well, I'm glad. Listen, do you want me to take you back to town so you can get your car? Oh, I'm not sure I can drive in this condition. I got a buddy who'll be glad to go in town and pick up my car. Oh. Well, I guess you just as soon go home, huh? Yeah, I would. Okay, you need a lift? Yeah. So I got assigned to Inferno right out of the police academy. I've been here about three months. You got assigned to Inferno. Yeah, believe me, there weren't a lot of hands in the air when they were asking for volunteers. Yeah, I'll bet. <laughs> but being that I'm from El Paso, they decided to send me one. But I think it had more to do with being a woman in a room full of men who didn't want to go. That's a pretty shitty deal. Yeah. I tell you one thing, I've watched more Wheel of Fortune than I ever thought was possible. Do you ever notice how skinny Vanna White's legs are? Yes! Yeah, you know, just get ready to say that. No. Yes, I was. It was on the tip of my tongue. Top half, big and full. And then she's got these skinny little legs. That's right. <laughs> and does Pat Sajak remind you of a kid you would have given a lot of shit to in gym class? Well, yeah. I mean, he's kind of cute. He's kind of a nerd at the same time. Like, if he asked you out, you'd think about it for a few seconds, but then you'd say, no, you had some other plans or something. <laughs> right. Oh, uh, take a left up there. Okay. <sighs> well. They told you how to change that dressing and all? Yeah. Because, you know, it's important to keep it clean. This weather's just a breeding ground for bacteria. Yeah, they gave me a lot of ointment and stuff. Okay. Be sure to eat right. You know, you lost a little blood. You need to eat and build everything back up. Yeah, I got plenty of food. Mm. 
Well, thanks again. Sure. You want to hear something funny, kind of goofy? Sure. Well, I was in that hospital, right? This is strange for me to be saying. Oh, no, go ahead. I probably won't think it's strange. You sure? I'm sure. OK. Well, I was on that stretcher, and I had my eyes closed. And then when I opened up my eyes, I swear to God, I looked up at you, and I thought I was looking at some kind of an angel. I know it's silly for me to say, but hey, that's just what I thought. I thought I was looking at an angel face. Well, thank you. See ya. Bye. I'm not some Romeo guy with a whole bunch of smooth lines. And I'd never say anything like angel face to anyone my whole life. But I meant it. Even if it did sound dumb as hell, I meant what I said about Layla's angel face. And I was just praying that she didn't think I was a goon for saying so. What a day. Scared me to death. I'm sorry. What are you doing sneaking around like that? I saw you pull up in a police car. I thought the jig was up. Yeah, well, I had to go hide. Well, the jig ain't up. It was damn near up. Could be up again. But it ain't up now. No, it ain't up now. Not for the moment, anyways. Ah, where's the car? I stripped it. It's at the hangar. Damn, Harold, that's fast work. Well, my power wrench is real quick. I got new batteries. So you drove the pickup over here? Yeah. Chuck, what happened to your arm? I got shot. Bullet came through the bathroom door, which is where I was hiding. Now you can tell people that you've been shot during a holdup. Yeah. I don't think I'll be bragging about that anytime soon. OK. Why didn't they arrest you? I told them I was a customer. In there, taking a crap. It's a good thing you weren't in the broom closet. Yeah, now that's a good thing. Oh, no question about it. Uh, no question at all. All four men are working together on this one. You're absolutely certain of that? Well, I stake my reputation on it. I mean, the odds of two sets of bank robbers hitting First Inferno on the same day at uh, exactly the same time have to be about a zillion to one. Well, yes, but the teller said that... Now, they came in two different automobiles. Uh, thus doubling their chances of getting away and uh, simultaneously creating a great deal of chaos and confusion. Well, that seems to have worked. Well, don't you worry about that. We'll, uh, we'll be catching these boys in short order. All right, well, thank you, Sheriff. Thank you. Four men working in two pairs are responsible for the robbery. It is reported that they have gotten away with over $100,000. Now, we understand that witnesses have gotten the detailed description of both getaway cars and their license plate numbers. Uh, that is correct. We uh, have the uh, detailed descriptions of both cars and license plate numbers, and I can assure you that it won't be long until these men are brought to justice. Uh, now, are there any... $100,000. Shit, my ass. I'm telling you, Harold, there was some major cash just sitting there. Well, I thought you said it would only take about $80,000 to get our plane up and running. Yeah, well, uh, in my limited bank robbing experience, I found that you don't ask for what you need. You take whatever they got. And there was like a million, maybe two million dollars. It, it was just sitting there. Well, the more the merrier as far as I'm concerned. If you think about it, you realize it ain't so great. It ain't? A couple million dollars in First Inferno? Yeah. That don't add up. There ain't that much money in this part of the state. Let alone what? First Inferno? 
So what does that tell you? Tells me, hey, we hit the mother load. No, we didn't hit the mother load. We hit a pile of dirty money. Dirty money. Do you know what kind of guys look for dirty money? Dirty people? Yeah, dirty guys. Now, here's the irony of it all, though, Harold. See, my bad luck being stuck in that toilet? Well, that actually turned out to be my good luck. Because the money may be dirty, but it's safe. How's that? Who would think someone will rob a bank, turn around, hide the money in the same bank? That's the last place they'd look. Yeah. Now, that's what I call ironic. Uh-huh. There is some bad news, however. There is? Shit, the money's so damn safe, I'm not sure how we're gonna get it. Hey, we could re-rob the bank. No, once it's enough for me, my bank robbing days are behind. Oh, good. Well, you'll think of something you always do. Son of a bitch. They got it all? Afraid so. Clean sweep. <laughs> Bastards are somewhere counting their money and having a good giggle. <laughs> they probably figured a clearer. 100,000, maybe. <laughs> well, get home with their goodie bag. And what do you know? Trick or treat to the tune of $3 million, damn it. Sheriff Gibson said he would find the money. It would take Gibson two hands to find his butt. And if you think about it, Dickwad, let's say he does find it. What does he find? He finds three million dollars. Then, whose tit is in the ringer? Huh? Whose ass is hanging out there in the breeze? I don't know. You're stupid! The feds will be down here in half a heartbeat. And they'll start asking you a few questions. And you'll just have to explain to them that you've been laundering a little cash. Yes, sir. And don't bother to mention my name, because I am clean as a whistle. I didn't touch no money. You think the feds will be down here? No. No. If there is a, a good and loving God, I will find the money before Gibson gets his finger out of his nose. And when I do find it, I'm going to take the some bitches who did this to me, put their heads on the chopping block, and then just like a freaking chicken. Something just dawned on me. What's that? Who knew I was running money through here? Me and you. No. You're not smart enough to rob your own bank and put in $100,000 in insurance claims and keep my three mil for your own. No. No? <laughs> You're not. <laughs> because if you did and I found out about it, I'd gut you like a jackrabbit from your nuts to your nostrils. No. <laughs> you do not have the cojones for that. I'll find out who did it, and when I do, there's going to be hell to pay. Oh. Damn, I don't believe this. I'm going to end up eating a pickle and a mayo sandwich. One second, please. Come in. Hi. Hi. How you doing? Pretty good. Come on in. Um, I, I just got to thinking with your arm being hurt and all, you might not be able to fix your own dinner, so I made you a little something. I hope you like lasagna. 
I love lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> Lasagna's like my favorite dish of all time. I brought some beer. Oh, I like beers too. Good. <laughs> Have you got company? Oh, no. The damn hose falls off. The thing keeps flushing. I gotta take the lid off. But I gotta fix the hose just about every damn time. She looked so beautiful, and I was just standing there talking about my broken toilet. Man, I just wanted to kill myself. Anyways. You hungry? <sighs> you bet. I'm starved. Good. We can sit up right here. Yeah, perfect. Here. Oh, here. Oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> you can't even get dressed, can you? No. The Curse of Inferno. That's what they call it. What's that mean, the Curse of Inferno? Well, pretty much everybody who lives here would prefer to be living somewhere else. But the curse is you can't leave Inferno. You can't leave? Well, you can. I mean, you're free to go. But something always happens to keep you here. That right there is the curse. That's just so weird. Most people work for Moe's Hudnall. The rich guy. Richest man in this part of Texas. And Moe's pays folks just enough to keep them hanging on. But not enough so they can get ahead or get out. That go for you, too? You want to leave Inferno? Yeah, in the worst way. Sometimes I wake up in the morning and got my eyes shut. And I think, let me just open up my <laughs> eyes and find myself anywhere else but here. And then you open your eyes. And I ain't moving. I'm in the same place, singing the same song, going nowhere fast. Well, it seems to me you need to do a little more than just close your eyes and hope. Well, I got a whole plan. I bought myself a sweet little Beach 18. A Beach 18? It's an airplane. It's a beauty, isn't she? Oh, yeah. See, you look at this plane, and you are looking at a real piece of aviation history. It's not some fancy streamlined number with all flash and gadgets, no. This right here is a workhorse. This is built to get the job done. Well, I take solid and reliable over fancy any day. Me too, absolutely. So can we go for a ride? A ride? Yeah, could we? You mean like up in the air? Yeah, like flying. No, she can't fly. She can't fly? Radial engines, they're a real pain. The right one's got no compression. Also got a little throttle linkage problem. The throttle won't advance. Of course, if the throttle did advance, <laughs> it wouldn't matter much. Because you still have the right engine problem. Exactly. But Harold, he's got it under control. Just needs a little work. Get some money for some parts. We'll be up in business. We could taxi if you'd like. Well, I'd love to taxi. Working for Moles has saved enough money to pay for my training. I got all my hours so I could fly left seat. And on days I wasn't working for him, I was over at Shreveport flying for some other people, making a little extra cash. That's very ambitious. Maybe a little too ambitious for some people. What does that mean? Well, this used to be Moles' plane. He bought a new one so he didn't use this one anymore, so he decided to sell it. Oh, well, nobody needs two planes. That's right. So I saved enough money to make a down payment and get a loan. But then when he found out it was me buying the plane, he got all pissed off. You know, like I'd overstep my boundaries. Are you kidding me? No. So he let me buy the plane, then he turned around and he canned me. He fired you? So I got the plane. But after I make my monthly payment, I ain't got enough money to get her up and running. I hate that guy. You and me both. How much would it cost to get the plane in working order? About 80 grand. You know, that kind of money is a little hard to come by. Yeah, well, if Moles would have kept me on slowly, but surely I had the money. Huh. Mm, okay. Cheers. Well, let's say you did get the money, right? And you got the plane up and running. What would you do then? Me and Harold. We're going down to the Caribbean islands, and we're going to start our own charter plane business. We're gonna fly people 
from the mainland to the smaller islands back and forth. Well, that's a great idea. Yeah, I thought so. But I have the curse of Inferno hanging over me. Well, you never know. Things could change. <laughs> we could talk forever about something or about nothing at all. It didn't really matter much. Time just sort of evaporated, and I wish that the whole world would just go away so we could be alone together forever. Oh, I love this song. Do you like it? Yeah. Are you interested in dancing? <laughs> I'm not much of a dancer. Okay. I'd love to dance. Our bodies were a perfect fit. They were like designed to be pressed together. I felt silly and I wasn't going to blurt out anything stupid like I had earlier that day. But I knew Layla was the one that was clear and simple. Now I just had to figure a way to keep her in my life. There still was one small problem. Starting tomorrow morning, Layla had to go back to work, back looking for the guys who robbed First Inferno Bank. And as luck would have it, well, I was one of those guys. But I decided to close my eyes and worry about that in the morning. Remove the dirt particle from the fiber. That is the most important step in carpet cleaning, lifting the dirt away without damaging. Now, Harold, do you feel the dirt becoming disengaged from the carpet fiber? No, I think so. Feel it. Massage the carpet. Feel the dirt separate. I think I do feel it now. Thank you. Now. Let's see if your carpet is dry. Okay. You see, it can feel dry on top, but is it dry deep down? That is the question. Well... Yes, I think it's dry. Now, we are ready to lift and suck. Well, then I guess one of us should have stayed on our knees. I do not appreciate that kind of vulgarity, and there is no room for humor in the carpet cleaning and restoration business. Do I make myself clear? Yes, sir. Vacuum, please. Think about the nap. Always move with the nap, never against the nap. You do not want to damage or abuse the fiber. Move gently with, with the, the nap. nap. Not like this. No, no. That's right. But like with this. the nap. nap. Come on, Harold. Right. With, with the nap. nap. Good. With, with the nap. nap. The mobile unit is a very valuable piece of equipment. Do not, I repeat, do not park it next to other vehicles. If you must park in a parking lot, park it in a far corner away from the other vehicles. I do not want to see any dings. Any dings will be deducted from your paycheck. And dings ain't cheap, understood? Understood. understood. You have your calls? Yes, we do. Remember, be cheerful. <sighs> Big smile. Big smile. Very good. Big smile. Good. Against the nap? With the nap. With the nap. Bye.
May I use your phone, please? Is it local? No, ma'am, I'm calling China. Yes, it's local. It's in there, but don't take long on expecting a very important phone call. It'll only be a second, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Hello. Is this person Ferno Bank? I have some very exciting news for you. Yes. Your name has been drawn, and your bank has won free carpet and shampoo rejuvenating treatment. That is correct. Oh, what a tangle web I started to weave. But if I did say so myself, it was one beauty of an idea, and it spared us the terrible task of re-robbing the bank, which was a good thing, because I wasn't up for going through that again. In fact, as far as I was concerned, the sooner we can get out of the business of being criminals, the better. Layla and I saw each other as often as humanly possible. We'd arranged to meet for breakfast, for a cup of coffee in the afternoons, anywhere and everywhere as often as we could. Unfortunately, the conversation sometimes turned toward the issue of her work. And these talks, they made me more than a little uncomfortable. I was thinking that maybe they weren't working together. You know what I mean? That there were two parties of two, and they just happened to rob the same bank at the same time. Well, I don't know. Does it make sense? I wanted to be helpful, but of course, I didn't want to be too helpful. It seems like the odds might be against it a little. I mean, two pairs of robbers showing up all at the same time, coincidentally and all. Yeah. I'd have to say, and this is just by me guessing, that they were probably all working together, all four. And for my money, I bet they're long gone. I don't know. It should be a real feather in my cap if I caught them. I mean, they have to pay for their crime. One way or another, they have to pay. I can't argue with that. I was hoping she was wrong, but I had a feeling she was right. One way or another, you have to pay for your crime. <laughs> I sure am having a good time. Me too. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I'm having the time of my life. <laughs> Me too. Do you want to go take a walk? <laughs> Where to? I don't know, just thought we could take a walk. Okay, let's take a walk. Yeah. Okay, come on. Come on. You know, I wouldn't mind having that little police uniform wadded up in a ball at the foot of my bed. <laughs> Chucky boy. What a putz. It was Chuck that was in the commode the day the bank got hit. Some girls just love losers. Huh, maybe I should have been a loser. Might have gotten laid more. No. Probably not. Sorry, I didn't know you were waiting. OK, boys. Any word? No. I've been in constant touch with Sheriff Gibson. He's following up on that lead in Houston. Two guys with lengthy records, spending cash, buying new cars, stuff like that. You ever see one of those geeks at a carnival bite their heads off of live chickens? <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. how could a guy bite the heads off of a live chicken? Wonder what drives him to it. To just <laughs> chew on a live chicken head. <laughs> you know? I, I can tell you why. It's this kind of aggravation. Because at this very minute, I could myself clamp my teeth right down on some poor little unsuspecting chicken. Never think twice about it. Why? I can tell you, because I'm pissed off. What the hell is going on around here? 
We're getting the carpets cleaned. Carpets cleaned? Who by? By the guy, a wizard. Stupid guy with the funny truck. Yep. How'd all this come about? Well, one of my assistant managers got a phone call, and it seems we won a free carpet cleaning. Won a free carpet cleaning? Yes. I believe they picked the numbers out of a hat. Yeah, and I believe I know whose hat that is. This guy used the restroom. Go ahead. Thank you. Broken, nobody hurt. This damn bathroom's nothing but trouble. Yes. Oh, yes. Hey, how's it going? Pretty good. But I, this part where people walk in and out is kind of a bitch, but I'm gonna get it. Hey, Harold. Forget the rug. That ain't why we're here. Okay, let's go. It's a lot smarter than I gave him credit for. Maybe we should have fired his ass after all. Let's follow him. Not too close. Let him get out of town. I just wish there was a way we can leave the rest of the money behind. You know, I mean, we use what we need to get the plane up and running. Then if we could just send the rest of the money back. What well, we could do what people do with their kids when they don't want them. <laughs> What's that? We well, put them in a blanket. On the front porch, you ring the doorbell, you haul ass. Somebody comes out, and they see the blanket. They get all nervous because they think there's going to be a kid crying and crapping all over the place. Then it turns out to be like a million dollars, and they go, holy shit, this ain't a kid. It's like a million bucks. What do you think of that idea? You lost me right after you ring the doorbell. Speed up. Speeding up? Huh? Uh, yeah. You might not have to worry about giving that money away after all. Watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it, Aaron, watch it! Oh, sh Look out! Kind of playing hell with the wizard mobile unit. Yeah, kind of. <sighs> Got something. It's about time. 
<laughs> Holy shit. What's the money? I don't know. Okay. All right. All right, here we go. <laughs> Chuck, are you messing with me? Are you trying to push my button because if you are, you are doing a wing ding of a job? No, sir, I'm not trying to push your button. I'll tell you one thing I know. You've got three million dollars of my money. But I thought the money was the... I'll do the talking here. I'm a patient man. Now, see, I appreciate a smart plan. Yes, sir. And that business of you robbing that bank and leaving the money there, is a gem. Mm? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and the decoy business today, I mean, that's smart stuff. You're shrewd, Chucky. <laughs> Thank you, sir. That was my idea. Shut up. You ever heard the saying, don't fuck with the truck when you're driving a Jeep? No, I don't believe I have. What that means is, I could kill you right now if I thought it'd get me closer to my money. I just slit your gullet like a bag of marbles. Watch your guts roll out on the ground. Any part of that I just said you don't understand? The part with the truck and the Jeep? Shut up! No, I think I got it all. You got 48 hours, pecker head. 48 hours. That's what you got until I see my money again or I turn you into fertilizer mix. Okay. Now get away from my car. Where did all the shredded newspaper come from? I don't know. Where'd the money go? <sighs> Not a clue. We're gonna get canned. You think so? Here's your head. Out of my sight! Out of my sight! You monsters! You monsters! Chuck! Chuck, what about the uniforms? Ideas? Not one. And what's more is I don't care. The less we know, the better off we are. How's that? We don't have the money, don't know where the money is. That's about as close as innocence we're gonna get. It's kind of... It's all kind of... Ironic, ain't it? Yeah, it's kind of ironic. Does me one thing, Chuck. We ain't leaving Inferno. We ain't gonna open up a charter plane business. In all the craziness and confusion, I almost forgot why we even wanted the money in the first place. And leave it to Harold to remember that we had a dream. You got that right, Harold. We ain't leaving Inferno. We ain't got our carpet cleaning jobs either. Nope. Basically, we ain't got shit. That pretty much sums it up, Harold.
see ya. See ya. It was wrong to rob the bank. I knew that from the get-go. I figured some shit might come down, but I had no idea as to what kind of shit or how much. Still, the money was behind me, and I was glad of that. Of course, if I did learn anything from this experience, it was that things are seldom as they appear to be. Oh, shit. Welcome home, honey. I can see you did a little redecorating. Yeah, I did. How do you like it? To tell you the truth, I'm not sure the table's in the right place. You know, there's a nasty rumor going around about you. Is that so? You don't get lippy with me, boy. You get lippy with me and you're liable to get your head busted. And I'm thinking you've been messed up enough in the last 24 hours. I ain't got no fingerprints. No hard evidence. But what I do have is instincts. And right now, my instincts are telling me that you had something to do with that bank robbery. I already told you. I was in the bank doing some business. And while I was in there, I went to the bathroom and I heard all the commotion outside. Yeah. I checked. And you don't even have an account at First Inferno. Well, I know that. I was there to open an account. I could haul your skinny little white butt into jail if I wanted to. Yeah. On what charges, sir? Oh, I could think of some if I had to. But I think I'll just hang around here and keep an eye on you and let you mess up. You will mess up. I'm sure of that. You ought to fix that toilet, boy. Oh, my God. It says here the Cessna caravan costs like $1.3 million each 12. That's amazing. Well, I'm a little partial to this one seater myself. You are, are you? I am. What happened to your head again? Um, vacuum cleaner hose flew up, hit me on the head. Well, that carpet cleaning's a dangerous business. <laughs> hmm. Here again was the trouble of telling one fib. One leads to two, leads to four, leads to eight, to sixteen, and so on. Lying to Layla ruined the thing I liked best about her. Well, second thing I liked best about Layla, and that was our ability to talk. It was all screwed up, and I wasn't sure how I was going to fix it. But I was going to find a way at some point. I wasn't sure when, but I was going to spill the beans and come clean with Layla. But not right this very second. Prepper? Yeah, and baggies all nice and neat. Got any ideas to put it there? Nope, but I do know one thing. What's that? Somebody out there knows a whole lot more than we do. Yeah, that would make sense. How are you gonna do this? I thought I'd tell Sheriff Gibson that I found it in the trash barrel. It's gonna sound a little fishy, but what does he care? He's gonna get his money back. What about moles? Oh. Now, moles. That man's gonna wanna kick my ass. But hey, once the money's out of my hands, the money's out of my hands. I can't give the man something I don't got. You gonna give him every last penny? Yeah, every last penny. It's the best thing, Harold. Whatever you say. A trash barrel. Yeah, a big old oil drum. In fact, I was about to pour some oil in there, and I looked down. It's a lucky thing I did. 
Yeah, lucky thing. And there was all this cash. It was just sitting there. Well, just how much cash is all this cash? Well, that's another thing we need to talk about. Me off guard. Oh, well, I'm sorry. What are you doing? I'm just waiting on Chuck. Where is he? I've been trying to find him. He's over there. What's he doing? Oh, well, he's just taking care of some business that needed straightening out. What kind of business? Well, I'm afraid I can't say, Layla. You can't say? Nope. It's personal. You understand. Yeah. Bye. Where's the money now, boy? It's nice and safe. But I do have one major concern. I know there's a few people in this town that might think that I had something to do with the bank being robbed. Yes, yeah, some people might have some suspicions, right? The coincidence of me being stuck in the toilet and me being the one who found the money. They might be a little more inclined to think that I'm the guy who did it. They might. Look, I'm just trying to do the above the board thing here. And I would like your word that my good deed won't cause me any punishment or harm. Or to be more specific, I don't want to do any jail time. Let me tell you this, boy. You get that money back to me. All three million dollars of it. And you can walk out of here a free man. Well, then I'd have to say we're in business, Sheriff Gibson. Now, here's what we're gonna do. Are you sure that money's safe? Yeah. All right. Eight o'clock tonight. You meet me over at the Caravan Hotel. You know where the Caravan is? Out on Highway 5. That's right. You meet me there with the money. Why are we meeting there? Well, there's a lot of funny business going on here lately, son. I mean, money showing up, money disappearing. I just want to be real extra careful. I see. I mean, the caravan hotel is in the middle of nowhere. Anything screwy going on, I'm going to be able to see it coming. All right. Eight o'clock, you come along. All right. Thank you, Sheriff Gibson. Close to the edge here, boy. So don't fuck it up. I think that's a very smart idea. Oh, thank you. Right here? Yeah. People don't think ahead. That's their trouble. They walk in here on December the 15th and bemoan the fact that they haven't set up their Christmas savings account. They blame me for not telling them. Well, I'm not going to be one of those people. No, you won't. And I respect that. I respect someone who knows the importance of thinking ahead and putting something aside. Those are admirable traits. Thank you. Whoa, uh, wait, just one second. Sorry. That's okay, I was just leaving. Miss Moans was just opening up her new Christmas savings account, something I'd be willing to bet you have neglected to do. Yeah. Well, okay, I'll be on my way. I'll be seeing you. She didn't say anything, did she? Did she ask any questions? No. She just set up her Christmas savings account, that's all. Kid cracked just like I said he would. Cracked? Oh, yeah, that little turd had the bunny all along. And just like I predicted, that visit to his house, 
That shook him up quite a bit. I mean, I scared the bejeebers out of him. I let him know what life would be like with me shining a flashlight up his ass every 30 minutes. Sounds unpleasant. Oh, it is. Mm -hmm. It's very unpleasant. So what's next? Right, you call straight for Airfield. You got some fight out this evening any time after 10 o'clock. Two seats? Yeah. Angel, call Montgomery. The bird has the worm. We got to move fast. I need backup. Always been my problem. I'm too nice. I am too lenient with people. I let them slide when I ought to stand on their fucking neck. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Too nice. Yeah, you're nice to people. Comes back, bites your ass. I gave Chucky 48 hours. I should have given him 15 minutes. See, I've been thinking. Got the old brain working. Do you know what it tells me? No. Two and two is four. Chuck robbed the bank. Chuck left the money in the bank. That's pretty smart. Yeah. But he didn't have it when we picked him up. No, no. So, who got in the bank? Who got past the police barricades? Who had that kind of access? I'll tell you who, his little girlfriend. I'll bet you anything, she has my money. Or she sure shit knows where it is. That's why we're gonna pay her a little visit. Come on! Not Layla. No shit. Is she around? Could be. Who's asking? Just tell her Chuck's here. You Chuck? Yeah, me Chuck. Who are you? Chuck! Layla. It was like my antenna had blown over. All channels were out. My picture was rolling. My speakers were spewing static. I mean, who were Huey and Dewey? And what were they doing here? <clears throat> Clifford and Vince, this is Chuck. Hello. Yeah, well, listen, um, Vince and Cliff know everything. They're from the Bureau, and they're just here to help us out. Oh, that's good. <laughs> For a second, I didn't know what was going on. As a matter of fact, I still didn't know what was going on but I decided to sit tight and play along. We're gonna tell everyone we're minor league baseball players, in case anybody asks. Don't you just cut it with minor league baseball crap? Nobody's asking and nobody gives a shit. You're just chasing a dream that never was and never will be, Clifford. That's all it You is. don't know. I oh, could've. Yeah. It was... Hey! I made some iced tea. Would you like a glass? Okay, I brought them up to speed regarding the transfer of money. That's uh, around eight o'clock, right? Uh, yeah. Okay, well, that'll give us a little better than two hours. Still at that motel? Yeah, caravan out on Highway 5. Highly unusual bringing a civilian in in this manner. I've been down here all alone, working without a net, doing a job that nobody else wanted to do. And I needed some help. And Chuck has been a great help, and we can trust him. How many points of access are we talking? Points of access? He means how many doors does one of these motel rooms have? Oh, just one. Been there a few times, have we? <laughs> One door simplifies matters. Yeah, we'll just bait the trap. Oh, now just hold on half a goddamn second. Now, I have been here going on four months sweating my balls off, figuratively speaking. And if you guys think that I'm gonna get stuck with the assignment from hell, and then you're just gonna pop by in the 11th hour and start calling all the shots, you got nothing coming. But you... No, I know. I bought a civilian into play. But there are extenuating circumstances, which I will explain at the right time to the senior people. But as far as what we do and how we do it, I am calling the shots. And if you don't like that, then you just don't let my point of access hit you on the way out. Now, what time are you supposed to be meeting Gibson? Eight o'clock. I'm supposed to call him once I check in. All right. Y'all better get going. Fine. Be 
I'm sure to get a room that connects to another room. And then about 15 minutes later, you guys check in and get a room next door. Now, Chuck, wait a minute, guys. Chuck, we're gonna give you a wire. That way the boys will know what's going on. Now remember, nobody, nobody makes a move until I give the word. Got it? Got it. Okay, I'll be in the car. We'll give Gibson and Lonnie some running room. That way there won't be any question when we get into court about their motivation. You know what I just realized? What's that? Moles, Hudden will slip through the net again. Shit, that's right. Yeah, well, you know, I thought I had him. Son of a bitch has nine lives. We got nothing on him. Now listen, remember, nobody makes a move unless I give the word, all right? Okay, better get going. <clears throat> Chuck, good luck. And thanks again for all your help, okay? Thank you. Yep. Needless to say, I was a little dizzy. I felt like somebody had thrown me in the dryer and set the dial for permanent press. I suppose I could have been upset to find out that Layla was onto me from the get-go. In fact, it'd be fair to say that she played me like a fiddle. But I wasn't pissed. I kind of dug the fact that Layla was so smart, so on top of the situation. And let's just face it, I dug the fact that she lifted the noose from around my almost doomed neck. The whole scheme was pretty simple once you figured it out. Lonnie knew Moles had a lot of cash moving through the bank. Lonnie and Gibson figured they'd hit the bank and split the three million bucks. But what nobody counted on was me and Harold. I need to be 32, 34. I, I scored on my last three possessions. Oh. Look, it was 24, 32. You scored six points. I just scored. That makes it 32, 34. Do the math, dipshit. Check. You're the dipshit. Shit. Oh. Oh. Even done. Well, what a surprise. You sure are looking good. What do you want? And she's got a little bite to her. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Where are you heading for, darling? Somewhere. I'd be willing to bet that somewhere is where Chucky Boy is with my money. And you're going to go and meet him, and you and him and my money. We're gonna head for the hills. I guess we were foolish trying to put anything over on you. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm a nice guy. I'm willing to do you a big favor. I'm holding my breath. I'm willing to drive you out there where Chucky is. I don't want to ride. Want is not an issue here. You'll either get in the car and take us to where Chucky is, or the boys here will tie you up. I'll put a big old gag in your mouth. And you can lay around going vroom, 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 like this while your boyfriend Chucky is dangling out there waiting for you. Fine. Let's go. Do you have uh, something in there that you want hard to hold for you? There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Ended. They're here. They're 15 minutes early, but they're here. Can you guys hear me? Steve Bill was my partner for six years. He never called goaltending. Well, maybe he never goaltended. No. They're right outside the door. Who is it? Howdy fucking duty. Open the goddamn door.
God damn, what a lovely sight. Ain't that a lovely sight? Oh, and aren't you one little sneaky son of a bitch? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Ain't that precious, Mr. Innocent here? Like I told you, all right? I found the money in a trash barrel behind a hanger. What do you want to do? Well, like she said, it's her show. We got to wait for her go-ahead. Well, what if I told you that I don't buy your, your goddamn money in an oil barrel bullshit? What if I said I think you're lying through your teeth? Can we get out of here? Would you shut up? What if I said that? All I can tell you is what I know, okay? I found the money in, in an oil barrel. You're the sheriff, so I, I came to you assuming you do the right thing. I got a good mind to kick your ass. What's so funny? I don't know, it's just that good mind part seems a little questionable. <laughs> Goddamn smart ass. I want to get out of here. I told you we'll go in a minute. Take your business here.
Okay. You okay? I think I ate the air conditioner. <laughs> Flight 31 at 10.05. Out of Shreveport. Yes, sir. I'm so sorry. I would tell you you're a little bit accident prone. I think you mentioned it. Mm -hmm. How you doing? What's in the bag? Low, don't move. FBI. When you cuff you and make a scene where you can just turn around, walk out of here nice and easy. Let's go. Of course, when I found the money, I realized I'd suddenly undermine the entire case. Undermine? That's right. I mean, at that point, the case would have been over. I would have nailed Gibson, but that meant Moles Huddendale was about to walk away a free man. And it was Moles we sent you to get in the first place. Exactly. Now, I realize this wasn't 100% by the book, but I just decided to throw that cash on out there as if I had never seen it. Narrowly sidestepping a little problem called entrapment. Well, I just wanted the bad guys to have the chance to regain their stolen cash. That way, I had the chance at nailing Moles and everybody else. And if this chance hadn't paid off, if it had backfired in your face, which it could have, would have been out the money and the guys who were laundering the money. That's true. But it did work. <laughs> you were damn lucky it did. Now, I don't approve. I want you to know that. Yes, sir. But you did land Moles Hudnall, which is something nobody else was able to do. Not to mention the $2.9 million you reclaimed. Yes. This young man that helped out, does he expect to be reimbursed for his contribution? Oh, I think he feels he's been paid. I mean, he's just happy to see justice done. Well, that's wonderful. You put in for two weeks? Yes, sir. Consider it approved. Thank you. Where are you going? Oh, well, I thought maybe I'd go to the Caribbean. Have a nice trip. I was looking for a pilot. I'm a pilot. Is that your Beach 18 out there? Why, yes, it is. Well, it's a beauty. It's got a rebuilt engine, new paint job, new seats. It's got the works. Well, I was thinking I'd like to go someplace remote. Remote and secluded. Oh, yeah. The more remote and secluded, the better. <laughs> well, it just so happens that we have a deal on remote and secluded today. Really? Is that true? Yes, that is true. know where we were going or what was going to happen, but for the moment, Layla and I were together. 
and that was perfect. The city streets are dark and cold Along the huts about to unfold The neon lights are flashing by A stranger's voice is whispering why We'll never stop, we'll never give in Our fire burns like a violin We'll keep on playing until the end A rock and roll will never bend We're living fast, we're living loud our hearts are beating like a dropping crowd We are the rebels, we are the ones Our music echoes like a thousand guns We're driving down the open road Our spirits high, our passion glow We're chasing dreams that seem so far We're raising hell like shooting stars We'll never stop, we'll never give in our fire burns like a violin We'll keep on playing, we'll keep on playing Until the end A rock and roll will never bend We're living fast We're living loud Our hearts are beating like a dropping crowd We are the rebels We are the ones Our music echoes like a thousand guns Stop, we'll never stop We'll never stop, we'll never stop Like a thousand guns